Hey there, Javi here with BarLenses.com and today we are putting the new Zion Crane 3 head to head against the DJI Ronin S. Let's do it. With the rise of better camera sensors in smaller and smaller packages, handheld DSLR gimbals have become extremely popular. The problem? For a long time, the big players in the gimbal game were not making one-handed gimbals, opting for the more traditional underslung two-handed design. Chinese manufacturer Zhiyun Tech took advantage of this underserved market and quickly went from an unknown to a respectable name in the gimbal industry with their Crane and Crane 2 gimbals. Last year, DJI finally introduced their own one-handed gimbal, the Ronin S. It blew the competition out of the water with a better build, more intuitive controls, and a solid app. Now Zion is hitting back with the Crane 3, a radical departure in gimbal design. The question on everyone's mind? Which one's better? Let's find out. First, let's take a look at what improvements Zion made to their new gimbal, starting with a radical design change. Instead of one long handle, the Crane 3 repositioned the handle from the bottom to the back, giving you a second point of contact and more comfortable ergonomics. The load capacity has gone up from 7 pounds to 10 pounds, and there is also a large improvement to the gimbal's motors, doubling the torque and almost tripling their response speed. They've added popular and much requested modes, such as Go Mode for fast paced action and Vortex Mode to do full 360 degree barrel rolls. So the Crane 3 clearly has benefits over the Crane 2, but the real question is, how does it stack up to the Ronin S? To test them out, I took both gimbals out to cover the PAX East video game convention and put them through their paces. The main things I was looking at were ergonomics, setup time, smoothness, and their standout features. I had both gimbals set up with a Panasonic GH5, a 12-35 f2.8 lens, and the corresponding focus motor. So first, let's talk about where they're comparable. There was no noticeable difference between the Crane 3's Go Mode versus the Ronin S's Sports Mode, or in the 360 degree barrel roll on both. The focus motors on both gimbals were very easy to set up and were pretty much plug and play. The Crane 3 has a slightly bigger wheel and is better positioned, but I don't feel that the Ronin S's wheel is lacking. They both have panorama, time-lapse, and motion time-lapse modes. But the big thing I was surprised by was that the Crane 3 is just as heavy as the infamously heavy Ronin S. Coming in at four pounds without a camera package or accessories, they're both a little unwieldy when fully kitted out. While they're both the same weight, the ergonomics of the Crane 3 are way better for a long day of shooting. Personally, having two points of contact far apart enough to brace my arms against my body made it so I fatigued way less and was better able to control the bouncy motion a lot of gimbals have when walking. It is also a lot easier to go into underslung mode with the Crane 3, since the back handle becomes a top handle as soon as you tilt forward. Getting the Ronin S in underslung mode is a pain to say the least, and you're definitely not going to go from a regular to an underslung shot mid-shot. The Crane 3 also has more dedicated buttons, making it easier to change modes and operate the camera directly on the gimbal without having to break out your phone or go into the app. So on ergonomics, I'm gonna have to give it to the Crane 3. When it comes to setup time though, it's a completely different story. While technically both gimbals are ready to shoot as soon as you balance your payload, Dialing in your motors and operating parameters to fit your shooting style is a lot easier with the Ronin S. The Crane 3's app leaves a lot to be desired, since it was harder for me to connect the gimbal to my phone, and once inside, the degree of customization you have on how the gimbal operates is very limited. The Ronin S app, however, is intuitive and much more user-friendly. Being able to auto-tune directly from the app on the Ronin S made it so that I had my setup dialed in after just a few minutes and being able to pre-program my user buttons to cover various settings I needed definitely saved me some time. That said, the initial balancing, while similar on both cameras, would have been a bit easier on the Crane 3 had I had a larger camera like an FS5 or a wider cinema camera like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K due to the longer axis arms of the Crane 3. The Ronin S famously has some issues fitting the wide body of the Pocket 4K without a riser or additional base plate, which is not an issue with the Crane 3. Still, because of how long it took me to dial in my settings on the Crane 3, I'm gonna have to give the setup time to the Ronin S. Now, smoothness is a hard one to compare, since I didn't do a scientific one-to-one -one comparison, pitting both gimbals head-to-head -to, -head to recreate the same shot with the same subject. That said, when both gimbals were well-balanced and motor settings were dialed in, I couldn't see a noticeable difference. Notice, 
I specified dialing in my settings. That is because on the morning of the show, I had to get a couple of shots quickly after arriving, so I grabbed the Crane 3 directly from the case and started shooting. Without spending time refining my motor settings, I did see some unwanted bumps and jerks in my footage. The Ronin S on the other hand is much more forgiving when I didn't fully dial in my settings and it still gave me good footage regardless. Once I was dialed in, both performed great though. I did some of the usual orbit shots, tracking shots, and even some barrel rolls and I thought they both performed really well with this camera package. It's important to note that the payload capacity on the Crane 3 is 10 pounds compared to the Ronin S's 7. Considering the payload advantage, it's tough to crown a winner here, so I'm going to have to declare a tie, since the plug and play nature of the Ronin S is evened out by the Crane 3's higher payload capacity. Lastly, I wanted to look at the standout features of both systems. The Crane 3 has added a new feature I've not seen in a 3-axis gimbal yet, built-in wireless image transmission. You can connect your camera directly to the gimbal's carriage and it will push an HDMI feed directly to your phone through the app. Unfortunately, I was very underwhelmed with this feature because while it would be a game changer if it worked well, the delay in the transmission made it so that I couldn't effectively use it as a framing tool, let alone for pulling focus. Cool idea? Not so cool execution. When packing them up, each gimbal has a key advantage over the other. The Ronin S breaks down smaller than the Crane 3, but the Crane 3 can lock each axis, making it easier to pack and transport safely. The Ronin S does have better battery life with 12 hours of runtime, beating out the Crane 3 7. So who has better standout features? Hard to tell. I have to give the Crane props for trying to innovate and bring new features to the table, but when they don't work as advertised, I'd rather have better battery life than a gimmicky feature. So at the end of the day, which gimbal's better? If you take your time to fully dial in both of these gimbals, they are very strong performers. But if you have little to no setup time, the Ronin S is going to give you more room for error in setup and balancing to get you a smoother shot. The fact that the app is much easier to use also makes it more approachable to those starting out with gimbals. That said, a setup time is not a problem. The ergonomics of the Crane 3 might make it easier on your arms and back over the course of a long shoot day. Personally, I like both systems, and I would probably pick one over the other depending on the shoot. At a show like PAX where I was running and gunning, the Ronin S would have worked better, but at the expense of my stamina and comfort. I could see myself choosing the Crane 3 on something like a narrative short or a slower paced documentary where I have time to set up my shots and dial in my settings. So there you have it everything you need to know about the Zion Crane 3 and the Ronin S. Have a question? Leave us a comment below or check out our blog for more information. Or you can try them out for yourself at borrowlenses.com. Thanks for watching.